Thank you, Professor Burgermeister, dear Christian, for these words. Um, Her Excellency, Mrs. Helwig Rötte, His Excellency, Mr. Peterloo, Ambassador of Switzerland, dear friends of ECP, when I have to talk or when I have the opportunity to talk about my father, it's quite a strange situation being older than he was when he made his first discoveries and stayed here and uh, lived in Nairobi and also being older when he at, died at that time. Well, he was, as already said, the first director, uh, a research director in 1970 to 1979. And he was a very dedicated scientist. He was a, uh, a visionary also. And his big vision was to unite the countries in the defeat of insected transmitted diseases to make a better world for nutrition, for animals, and of course, for humans. And I think part of these aims at that time have already been fulfilled here in Isipe, and I'm sure my father would be very proud of what I am able to see today. If I go back to the first days of my father, you can see him in the middle, with a beetle-like uh, haircut, and he was the youngest son of an artist's family. His father and his mother were both artist painters, and they both detested science. <laughs> These were the parents. You can see them in the background. <coughs> My grandfather was tuberculotic, and he therefore lived on the sea coast of the Mediterranean. And my father had the chance to grow up with animals. You see his goat and with fishes and swimming in the seaside. But he had to become an artist. That was the aim of the parents. So very young, you can see him here on the left side on a painting of my grandfather. He had to start the violin and he became a very brilliant violin player up to 20. That was the age when he left home and he also left his violin. His heart always was with insects. So he started very early, about at the age of 12, he became a member of the Basel Entomological Society, hunting uh, butterflies. And he had recognized, as you all know, that butterflies are influenced by strong light. But he hadn't in, uh, known at that time that he would be able to find other substances which would attract butterflies about 40 years later, the pheromones. You see him here on the right side as a student and then <coughs> marrying my mother in 44, still war, World War II time, and you can see the guests were in the military uniform. Then he left Basel to go to Cambridge in England, and he worked with Professor Wigglesworth, who wrote the book on insect physiology. He later on translated that book into German, and then passed to Paris, worked with Professor Grasse in Paris, and came back to Basel to work with Professor Rudolf Geige. You see him below on a very bad picture, catching Che Che flies. But Professor Geige was the founder of the Swiss Tropical Institute in Basel, and he also held a science laboratory in Ifakara in in Tanzania, which you can see on the right side. And actually, the virus of the termites were implanted at that time in Ifakara into the body of my father. They had applied research, and already in that time, you needed money to make research, so a, a construction company actually founded the research on different wood specimens being tested for their resistance against termites. And that was the moment where my father got fascinated by this social animal and by the caste system. And he had realized that compared to ants and compared to bees, termites were not really researchly uh, founded. 
You can see him here with the flat cages of plexiglass he had invented to observe the termites, and he came back to Basel, became the chief of the Zoological Institute in Bern, and he continued working with termites and working with cockroaches. Once we sat at home and my father came home at night and he said, well, I just realized to make soldiers, to introduce soldiers. Fortunately, only termite soldiers. By feeding special substances, he didn't really know what it was, but in 1959, together with Professor Carlson, he introduced the pheromones, he defined the pheromones, and he made the first synthetic pheromone of the world. Well, the funny story there is that pheromone comes from the Greek, you all know, and I don't know how good you are in Greek. I can tell you my father was very bad in Greek. He had one year of Greek at school, then he was thrown out of the humanistic gymnasium <laughs> to go to a scientific gymnasium. But anyway, apparently it's enough one year of Greek at school to define a new, world, a new word which will go all around the world, the pheromones. Well, the first uh, meetings, scientific meetings, nobody really realized about the importance of pheromones. I'm not close enough, okay. Nobody really realized the importance, and what I heard from my father, all the discussions were on the spelling of pheromone. Should we put an H in it? Should we put a second R in it? But still, the word has survived as it was defined in 1959. Well, years later, always in this vision of being able not only to make research on pheromones and uh, insect uh, combat, but also to unite forces in the African continent together with experience from all other countries, he was one of the first research uh, directors of ICP, fascinated by the infrastructure here by the kindly people here and by the scientific uh, uh, quality he found in Kenya. You see here the first buildings of Isipe, which were on the land of the University of Nairobi. I don't know if you remember this time. And then some years later, uh, there was a second lab in Kajado, which was opened by Professor Odiambo. You can see him and my father on the picture of the newspaper on the top, and my mother who was always accompanying my father on the right side. Other picture out of that time. People always being very happy, typical for ECP. And then these were the new buildings added to the old ECP. And at that time, in the 70s, 75, 76, the research of ECP was published not only in scientific journals, but also in the public media. And you see my father here in a television show on the Kenyan television, and newspapers in Switzerland, all over the world, and of course here in Kenya too. 1976, I came to Kenya to, for holiday actually, but uh, everybody who knew my father knows that I was immediately abused to help him, and so I was holding the flashlights and passed my holidays as an assistant of my father. There has also in that time been all a regular exchange of young scientists between Kenya and Bern, the University of Bern, and you can see above my parents with uh, Kenyan students which were working in Bern, and on the right side you can see the Zoological Institute of Bern at that time. Unfortunately, my father died quite young in 79 from a heart attack and one year later on this field where we are here we had a very uh, impressive ceremony to 
unveil the statue which you will unveil, see unveiled again today. And you can see on the photographs uh, my mother on the right side, uh, my, the statue of my father. On the left side of the statue, the artist. We don't know who it was. If somebody knows his name, please tell us. And you see all a group all around together with the Swiss ambassador, Mr. Pestalozzi, on the left side. Well, last but not least, I would like to transmit the gratulations of my mother and the best wishes for success of Isipe. Unfortunately, she couldn't come because she broke her pelvic bone eight weeks ago and she didn't really dare to come and to come climb in an in a airplane, but she's still very fit and she will be fascinating by all the memories I will give to her after the day. Thank you very much.